Today's election day. We're gonna go vote now. Your last name? Troyana. T R O I A N O. There we go. You can vote over right over there. Okay. We did it. I'm here working the poll today uh, in support of Nick Triano. Today I took off work to help campaign for Nick and hopefully he can become our next congressman and help break the gridlock in Washington, D.C. And I was uh, just handing out pamphlets, asking people if they heard of Nick Triano, if they knew who he was. I'm greeting the voters and encouraging them to vote for Nick Triano and explaining that he's a citizen-funded independent candidate for U.S. representative. Well, I've been out here at the polls in Paul Pack Township since 7 o'clock this morning, and I've been on site and have uh, taken great pride in uh, uh, mentioning Nick's name to virtually everyone that's walked in the door today. I truly believe in Nick, and I felt that it was time for somebody to go out and uh, make a change. I'm a registered Republican. I'm not affiliated with a specific party. I'm a Democrat. I'm a Green Party. We are just people who want to see the people represented again in our, in our government. And the problem with the gerrymandered system is moderates, like myself, don't have a voice. I read about Nick uh, entering the campaign in the River Reporter, and it was such a welcome article to read because I had lost total faith in his opponent and we went to the event in Milford and from that point on my husband and I were definitely supporting Nick. For the first time ever most Americans now say that the next generation will inherit a lower standard of living than the one that we enjoy today. I think that America deserves better, that America can do better, and we can do better together. America deserves better is the most uh, appropriate way to explain it. It's exactly the way I felt. We should not be uh, in this political environment that we're in today. And so that resonated totally with both of us. I was trying to, to go to different political campaigns and see if they wanted to utilize our product as an advertising mechanism. And I was so enthralled with what they were doing that they actually like reversed the sales pitch on me. And I was like, oh my God, okay, I'm just gonna work for you guys and like volunteer. What spoke to me the most about Nick's message was his focus on addressing our national debt and fiscal responsibility, but also that he would only accept contributions from real people, uh, not from PACs or special interests. And I decided that he's the type of person I'd love to help with this campaign. The feeling was just overwhelming with everybody who came. We, we were getting goosebumps just because of the overwhelming outpour for Nick. It was fantastic. You know, when I listened to him on WTVA last, I guess two nights ago, I said, hey, this guy's on the right track. When we get people who's arguing and following party, party lines, there is going to be no middle ground. If there's no middle ground, there's no compromise. No compromise, nothing gets done. And I think we can see that in the Congress right now. And so as a consequence, people are angry. They're upset, and they're looking for a better answer. He wants to stop the bickering that's going on in Congress today. And that's what we have. We have, that's why nothing gets accomplished. I think it's time for new blood. I think uh, the younger people coming in have uh, uh, more ideas and better ideas on how to run the country. We got to solve something with the budget, and I'm hoping that Nick is going to do that. I've got two granddaughters and a grandson. They're going to be paying the price for what's going on right now. Something has to be done. Somebody's got to take a stance. Nick is going to finally do something that's going to make a, make a, a difference. I think the biggest win for us was the fact that we managed to bring together so many people from so many different backgrounds who became really, really passionate about Nick's candidacy and the idea that change is something that they can really contribute to. We moved into this big house with five other staff members. We, not all of us knew each other before we began. And so I think my life here in the campaign has really been a 24-7 focus. Uh, we have all really poured ourselves into it. Working on the campaign was challenging and rewarding at the same time. What is your life been like since working on this what life <laughs> <laughs> it's shocking what we've been able to put together in just eight months well the biggest step I think we took um, and it was our biggest hurdle at the beginning was getting the signatures necessary to get on the ballot so we spent four months uh, along with 70 volunteers getting those signatures uh, and in the end, we got 7,054. Despite having to collect three and a half times more signatures than either of my opponents, and despite having absolutely no party infrastructure to rely on, we did it. 
and we did it together. So we have built this coalition of 22 mayors from both parties that have said, you know, we're not supporting um, the party, we're not supporting an incumbent, but we're making a free choice to support Nick as an independent. I think the mayor's council has been huge. I want to say we got over 250 press hits, I think. One of the coolest moments was when we got on Greta Van Susteren's show. That was kind of a wow moment for us. Why did you become an independent? Just to run or did something happen? Well, after the government shut down, I realized that not only is our country broke financially, it's also broke politically. And we need to fix our political system in order to tackle any of the big issues we face. I think when we found out that we raised more money than any other independent campaign in the country running for the House, it, that was a really big deal for us. If we don't win, I think we've really proved uh, with the successes that we have had, uh, something that can be mimicked across the country with other young candidates. We proved that we can give people a viable third option. Eva, how are you? We have so much uh, to celebrate tonight, so much to celebrate. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like winning this election may not be one of those things. <laughs> it's natural to feel disappointed, but there's no reason to feel discouraged, not after what we accomplished. <laughs> First of all, I want to say is thank you. Uh, thank you first for believing in me, uh, but more importantly, uh, thank you for believing in our uh, collective ability uh, to change politics as usual. Better to light a single candle uh, than curse at the darkness. Better to light a single candle than curse at the darkness. And in the darkness of today's partisan, gridlocked, special interest, corrupt system, we not only lit one candle, tonight we lit over 20,000 candles. And I think what we have done is illuminated a new way of doing politics. Uh, we've illuminated a way of running for office untethered to a party untethered to the special interest. We've illuminated a way of running a substantive, issues-oriented campaign uh, that hopefully will have ripple effects uh, for, for election cycles to come in our district and far beyond. This campaign has succeeded by giving us all more choices. Folks uh, are tired of politics as usual. I think it's really um, motivated young voters to get involved and feel optimistic about millennials' influence in politics today. It's demonstrated to a lot of people they don't have to uh, accept status quo. And so the message is getting out there to start to look at things differently. I think that everywhere in the country people need that, that option. They need to believe in their political system again. They need to understand that they are their political system again. What I would like other people to take away from this effort perhaps is that you should try something, even if you're not sure if it can be done, because if our generation doesn't get involved and start to change things, it's not going to happen, and we're the ones that have the most at stake. And I think that we've also opened the floodgates for other uh, candidates across the country, like ours, young, Republican or Democrat, to run differently. I want people to know that this effort is not a single issue here in our district, here in Pennsylvania that our effort is an effort of the millennial generation, is an effort for all independent thinkers across America. When I think back on everything that we've accomplished over the last eight months, and I think about the fact that there's another election in 2016, I just imagine what we could do over the next two years. I think this is just the beginning.